In today's Power Automate blog, we'll be looking at taking an existing template and making some crazy changes to it to achieve a desired outcome. So what I'd like to do is I want to check my emails for attachments, which of course um, complies with specific criteria. And then I want to save those attachments to a specific channel folder in my Microsoft Teams. Now, as you should know by now, um, SharePoint is the storage behind Teams. So if you want to look for a template, we're actually looking at saving attachments to SharePoint. Now, I had a look and uh, you'll see that they are highlighted. Here's some of the templates that are available. So save email attachments to SharePoint, save email attachments to SharePoint and receive a notification and delete the email and add a row to Excel. I had a look at these and um, some of them are a little bit overcomplicated at the moment and it's not what I want to use. So what I am going to use and to modify is actually this one that I've used before, save Office 365 email attachments to OneDrive for business. And what I am going to do is I'm going to just change the OneDrive for business to SharePoint. So let's take a look at using and modifying this template. And there you can see it's um, already authenticated the apps that it needs in this template. So that would be Outlook as well as OneDrive for Business. I am going to click on Create Flow. In a previous blog, I used this template as well. And please remember to switch off the template immediately as soon as it's created. There we go. So you can see that it's already set up. I'm going to first things first switch off this workflow. And then I'm going to go and edit the workflow. First thing I always do is rename the workflow. So save invoices from Outlook, or let's say from email to Teams channel for finance. And um, let's take a look at the different um, triggers and actions that's been added. So the first trigger that you got there is that it looks at new emails that comes into your inbox. So let's expand that. There you can see that it looks at your inbox and there's of course advanced options that you can fill in as well. I normally don't put my filters in here because it needs to be exact. So I'd rather use um, a condition control to put filters in. And then if you look at the next section, this actually looks at getting the attachment from the email. It's got to go and find it and put it somewhere for you temporarily so that it can find the attachment. And it then creates it for you in OneDrive. There's also a condition added by Microsoft, um, which actually helps to troubleshoot an error that could occur. Um, so it sets up a little delay that it says, wait 10 seconds and retry again to store the document in OneDrive if it didn't succeed. So for now, I'll definitely leave that there as well. So let's just uh, collapse that for now. So you'll see that it says apply to each um, attachment. It gets the attachment and then it creates the file in SharePoint. So I'm going to replicate that step before I remove that. So I'm going to go and look at the actions and I'm going to search for exactly the same action. So apply, that's of course if you can spell, <laughs> apply to each and there you can see there's the control I want to use. And what it does is then says select the output you want and of course the output is the attachment from the mail. Then it says add another action. Now the next action I have to add is to then create the file in SharePoint or Teams, which is what we want to achieve. So I'm going to go and add another um, action and it's create file. Remember, it's not create item. File is the document. Item would be a normal list item. So if I search for create file, you'll see there it's got different options. And the one I want to use is the SharePoint one, because again, be reminded that um, SharePoint sits behind your Microsoft Teams. Now, once you've chosen this, you then have to go and look for the team where you want to save this to. So if I select the drop down, I would be able to select the team. So sometimes it doesn't show in your um, recent items. So the easiest way is to be is to copy the URL of that site here. So let's just get the URL quickly to the site behind the team. And you can get that URL by going to the team clicking on the files tab and clicking on open in SharePoint. It opens up the SharePoint site behind the team and then you can um, copy the URL. So you'll see that it says your domain name forward slash sites forward slash whatever the team's name is. In this case, it's finance. So I'm going to just copy that URL and go back to my flow and I'm going to paste that there. Just be careful that when you paste first select the enter custom value 
and then paste the URL there. Let's go to the next step. It then asks for the folder path. You won't be able to select the channels or the folders for that team if it didn't authenticate that site address. So if I go to the folders, you'll see that the channels in a team, so if I can just bring that team up again, the channels in a team, these channels that you see there, actually creates folders in the SharePoint site. These are subfolders inside of those channels. So every channel is a folder and it sits in the shared documents library. It doesn't sit open. You have to go to shared documents, expand that, and then choose, and it will be accounts payable, and in accounts payable, I've got a subfolder for um, invoices submitted that I want to use. So I want to move any invoices that I receive on email into the invoices submitted folder. And there we go. So then very importantly, it's asking me um, the file that must be created. Where do I get the name? It's quite easy though, because when you click on file name, you'll see that there is an attachment name. So um, that we can choose attachment name. And then the file content would be the attachment content. So that's quite easy is to put the um, site address in to choose the folder path. That would be the channel level. That would be um, the subfolder level. Now, another thing that I do have to add here, and I'm going to just collapse this to uh, look at the next section, is if I go to apply to each attachment, you'll see that that condition I actually want to reuse. It's definitely going to be too difficult for me to try and build that from scratch. It's much easier for me to use that condition in case I needed the lay because there's an error. You'll see that it actually looks at a, a 409 error that you might um, receive and that's based on there's a file existing or an older version of a file. So I want to repeat this condition. So the easiest way to do that is to click next to the condition and to go copy to my clipboard. I'm going to just collapse this again. And then if I go to apply to each, so let's just collapse that section as well. I'm going to add an action there and I'm actually going to refer to my clipboard. So there's the condition that I just copied and it then copies that same condition in there. Something you have to be very careful of when you do modify or copy pieces of a template is that sometimes it references the name of that action. So remember, each action has a name. You'll see this one's called apply to each. This one is called apply to each attachment on the email. So if I had to go to that condition, you'll see that this formula there refers to the section name, which is create file. So there it says in brackets, create underscore file, which means it's referring to this name of the action. So that's very important to um, take note of. So if I go to this section, this condition, you'll see that it still refers to create underscore file, even though mine's called create file too. So what I have to do is I'm going to delete the other um, section and then I'll rename mine to be create file too. So let's just collapse that again. If I go to apply to each, I am going to um, delete this condition and then delete this section. So sometimes it doesn't want you to delete the whole um, section or the whole action. It's easier to first go and see if you can delete one of the sub areas. So let's go delete. There we go. And then I can delete that section as well. Remember, this was the OneDrive section that I don't want to use. And that means I can now also delete that. And there we go. So I've replicated exactly the piece that I had with um, OneDrive. It's now SharePoint. And if I go to create file, I just want to collapse this. I'm going to rename this to be create file. And then I'm going to rename this condition to just be condition. So let's see if all of these still works. This now refers to create file, which is that section name, which is perfect. And then of course there's a delay here as well. And then something else we have to change is create file entry retry to. So um, I'm going to just remove that. So part of this retry is a delay and then it wants to retry creating the file. So I'm going to copy that section again. So again, I'm going to go there and I'm going to say copy to clipboard and then I'll go here and add an action. I'm going to go to my clipboard and it's this create file that I want to copy. So if I look at the condition, let's make sure 
that this is working. So there's a delay and then there it will try and recreate the file. Okay, so all those logical steps are in place now. I've got create file, I've got create file 2. Let's see if everything works as it should. Always try and save your workflows after making small changes because otherwise you might get an error and you don't know where you went wrong. So normally I make a small change and I save it to see if I get an error message and then I'll add another section and I'll save it. So there we can see it's actually working. If that referencing in your um, formulas didn't work, it would have given you an error now. So apply to each now exists. There's my create file. There's my condition. The condition is do I get an error message? If I do, set a delay timer for 10 or 30 seconds and then retry creating the file. Now there's one more thing that I do want to apply here and that is a condition on the type of emails that must save the attachments from. So I'm going to add a condition before I create the file. I'm going to add a condition there and um, you'll see that there's a condition control and a condition control says only do this when so and so um, is valid. So I'm going to choose a value and say that when the subject of the email and you have to go and change this based on what your scenario is. And I'm not going to use is equal to. I'm going to use contains. And I'm going to say when the subject contains the word invoice. Oops. The problem is, is that is case sensitive. So if someone spells that different, it's not going to work. So I'm going to add in another row. And I'm going to say when the subject contains the word invoice. And I'm going to change this to or. So or invoice or invoice. We're going to add another row and say when the subject includes the word all in lowercase. And then we're going to add another two. I know this sounds like an overkill, but believe me, it doesn't help that it just checks some of the um, parameters. So I'm going to also say invoice or when it includes invoice. So I think that should wax it, but you must test this and see if it works um, based on what it is that you're trying to achieve, of course. And this is an or statement, so all that, all that, all that, all that. And here I'm going to just rename this to check for invoice in subject. You would know based on your scenario what that um, condition must be. Now one last thing we have to do is then based on this condition, if it does say yes, it includes one of those words in the subject, what must it do? Then this whole section at the bottom must move into the yes area. So this whole section that you've created there that says create the file, check for errors, etc. This whole section I'm going to move into there and see I simply click on it and I'm going to drag it. So this is then dragging that whole section in there and this is quite easy with Power Automate. If it does not comply, then the workflow stops and it's as easy as that. So there we go, save invoices from email to Teams channel. So what we've done is we've changed this template that used to point to OneDrive to now point to SharePoint, which sits behind my Microsoft team. Now, um, the first thing I have to do is to switch on the workflow again. So let's just make sure that it's saved. I'm going to go back. Oh, it was busy saving and I'm going to turn this on. And we have success here in the runs. You can actually see any previous runs um, from the workflow and when it was running. So what I've done is I've sent myself um, three mails, but not myself. I had Brom, my internship, sent me the emails. Um, I've sometimes noticed that the flow excludes when you send it from yourself. So that's just safer to test it from another account. So I've sent myself three emails. Um, I'll just show you that. And... Um, Remember that my workflow checks the subject of the email, not the name of the file, but what I did do, so there you can see the subject I made with a capital I. I also made the, in, the, the name of the document the same so that I could check which document it saved. There's one that's all lowercase, so the subject's lowercase, the invoice name is lowercase as well, and there is a capitals one, which is a capital um, invoice name on the attachment. So these are three emails that Brahm sent me that I can test with. The workflow is going to check the subjects, so either or, 
I wanted to send three to see if it still checks them. And then if I go to the team, let's open the team. So there's my finance team. I chose the accounts payable um, channel, which is my first folder in the root. If I go to files, I then have a couple of subfolders there that I use. And the first one that I sent it through was invoices submitted. So let's have a look. And we have success. There's my three invoices. That's pretty nifty, I would say. So if you look at the runs, if you do get an error message or something doesn't comply, it then actually gives you the details when you go on um, the workflow run. So there you can see it shows each of the steps and whether it was successful or not. So there we go. I checked for the new email. I checked whether the invoice um, was in the subject. It said it's true. And you can see here, yeah, this is the specific check it checked for as well. So this is the one that was spelt with a capital I. And that is pretty nifty. I think that this workflow you can actually use for different scenarios. We are going to continue building on this tomorrow. Um, you'll see that I had three folders in that Teams um, channel. So I am going to build up on this workflow tomorrow and I'll reference it. So if you do skip this one for tomorrow's blog, you'll have to repeat this workflow um, steps first. I hope you enjoy this and um, we're 10 days into our power um, platform challenge and I've still got loads to share with you at the, at the moment we're busy with flow. So we'll chat soon and uh, I'll see you tomorrow.